All right, what's up guys? In this video, we are going over the basics of working with type and text in Vectornator on the iPad. A uh, few technical specs, I'm uh, using a regular iPad, I think sixth generation from around 2018. Um, and Vectornator is a free app that is vector designed just like Adobe Illustrator. So if you were like me waiting for Adobe to put out the full version of Illustrator, um, hopefully in October on the iPad, uh, Vectornator is a great alternative. So let's get started. Um, I'm already in the app. Go to go ahead and create a new document. Um, just like most Adobe apps now, you have a ton of different templates if you're trying to make something to print out. I've been working at social media sizes recently, so I'm gonna scroll down and I love the 1080 by 1080 pixel Instagram post size. There's that square that is perfect to be posted to Instagram. And now we are in our Canvas and Vectornator. I'm gonna go ahead and set a few settings um, that I'd love to just have on by default. Up in the top left, next to the X, that I click on that little arrow, I now have the gear that gives me all of my canvas settings or canvas options. Um, the one thing that I always turn on is the grid. Uh, the grid in graphic design lets me align things uh, visibly. It's an invisible grid, meaning if I were to save this or export the image, the grid would not actually be there. It just helps me when I'm making it. So it might be a hidden by default. I change it to perpendicular. Now, speaking of aligning things, um, if I go to the bottom of the settings down at the bottom left, and go to my snapping settings, I have all kinds of snapping turns on. Snapping lets uh, the software snap different objects or different text to each other. I'm snapping to the guides, to the smart guides, I'm snapping to edges, and I'm snapping to the grid itself. I love snapping, I'll turn it off if I'm doing uh, more artwork, but I'm doing more text design, so let's keep it on for now. Close my settings, let's make some text. The text box down here, it's just text box in, vector, in Vectornator, click and drag that. Now I have this cyan text that's left over from uh, when I was editing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, type out my name, all caps, really loud, and we gotta change some things about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click my arrow tool over on the left, grab my style tab up in the top right, and here I can change the color, the font, the size, the alignment, all that good stuff. So first things first, let's get it to be not this burning cyan color, let's make it a Let's make it just black because I've got a pretty light canvas right now. Next thing is this text is enormous, so let's go ahead and drop the size right here. I'm just clicking and dragging on, on the size. And then third thing, I, I don't need Zapfino right now. Um, maybe I'm having like an Avenir next kind of a day. Or maybe I'm having a Futura day. I'm always having a Futura day if we're, if we're going to be honest about it. Um, what, I, like, what I'm using right now is Futura Bold where it says type. That's the font weight. Um, so you can be medium, you can be medium italic. I'm using bold because I'm trying to yell right now. Um, and I got that. Now that I'm using a much smaller font, I can increase the size a little bit more if I was so inclined. A um, few things to note is that the text box, if I were to change that, it doesn't scale the text, it just changes the box the text fits in. Um, good for like print design and stuff like that, whole separate conversation. I'm gonna go ahead and change the alignment. I can center my text. And then I can change things like the kerning, tracking, and line height. Kerning is the space between each individual letter, so I can squish the letters together. I kind of like that aesthetic. Tracking is the space between all the letters together. And then line height is also known as leading. Um, leading in like Adobe Illustrator or any Adobe software is the space between the baselines of text. A few other options. Um, the fit bounds to text size just squishes my text box to only be as big as the text that I have. I love doing that. Um, but let's say I wanna be a little bit more flavorful with my text. The way text boxes work is all the text inside of a text box is only one font, so it's all Futura right now. But maybe I want Luke, my name, to be a complimentary style, like that Zapfino that I had at the start. I'm gonna go ahead and widen the text box. I'm gonna double click on there so I can edit the text. And I'm gonna go ahead and backspace so it's just Jenner. Now I've still got a pretty big text box for just the one word, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit fit bounce to text size. Recenter that, and I can see with my smart guides when I'm like centering it on the canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit bigger, just because why not? Max my canvas size out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab a new text box after fitting that one. A new text box, and this one I'll type out Luke L U K E. Keep it lowercase. 
and I'll change this one to be a complementary. If future is really big, bold, geometric, let's grab like a thin, uh, I'm gonna grab that Zafina. Let's grab like a thin handwritten one. Far too big, so let's go ahead and grab our style and drop it. I can align it on the left side, change that text box, move it, I can position it however I want to. If I wanna arrange things, I can go ahead and squish the text box a little bit, click and drag on my selection tool, and then go to my, instead of the style tab up here, I can go to my arrange tab, and now I can align the different objects that I have on their right, center, or left side. I can even like uh, center them vertically too. So, pretty cool. Uh, finishing touches, let's go ahead and change the color of the text. Let's go ahead and uh, fast forward a little bit through this part. Some finishing touches as I'm doing right here is just like adding some drop shadows. I can uh, move all the text together and create something that looks pretty simple, pretty elegant, pretty nice. Um, if I want to see the whole thing before saving it, I can turn off the grid momentarily. And now I've got something that looks pretty nice. So this is the basics of Vectornator. Again, it's an alternative to Illustrator if we're working on the iPads and we uh, are waiting for a full Illustrator to come out on the iPad. I'm really looking forward to that one. But in the meantime, Vectornator is an awesome, awesome alternative. Um, thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. See ya.